This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you go to the 3D Experience Student Community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge-up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Go to Student Community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And welcome back to the Open Alliance show coming in from uh, week two. Now we're here in week five. It's 7407 Wired Boars. This team had an absolute, absolutely incredible uh, uh, week two when they showed us their buddy climb uh, design that they're looking at doing. That was really the talk of all of the uh, Open Alliance teams so far. So we're really excited to check back in with Wired Boards, see what they're doing both on their mechanical and their programming side as well. So, Greg, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to meet these new students and uh, hear more from them. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this update. I think everybody's been waiting to waiting for this update, so I'm excited. Absolutely, so one of the four of you, I know you're all new uh, coming to the Open Alliance show. If you don't mind just introducing yourselves, let us know what you do on the team, and we'll jump right into uh, what's going on with your bot. All right, my name's William, and I worked on the CAD, um, specifically a lot on the Climber. Hi, I'm Sid. Uh, I'm a lead programmer, and I've been working specifically on uh, the odometry and autonomous. Uh, yeah. Hey everyone, my name is Sebastian. Uh, I'm another lead programmer. I worked on the claw um, and sort of the arm system for you know picking up and um, dropping off game pieces. Hi, my name is Anne. I'm on the programming team, and I've been focusing on auto pathing and also uh, making the key map. So let's jump right into uh, your mechanical side first, as you want your team wants to talk about. We're going to be talking about uh, intake locks, uh, climber changes. Uh, different types of motors on your bot. So what do you want to run into uh, and show us off? We'll show your screen share a little bit and we'll kind of go back and forth uh, showcasing what's going on with your bot. Yeah, well, we have a robot now, which is different from last time. So we've gone from CAD and been able to mostly assemble our robot. Uh, as you can see, the climb is still not on, but we've made uh, some small changes and adjustments as we've um, built the robot. So we've actually done some stuff oh wait Holy shit, I, I know it's okay um so we've been able to reduce the backlash on our elevator by using um epoxy and we've also made our own 90 degree uh, gearbox because we couldn't find any from max planetary so we decided to make our own and it's a 3D print that has bolts going all the way through with plates that clamp it so that the layers don't lose strength. And it's been working pretty well for us so far. And we've also made, um, been able to lock this intake in the front. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to be able to um, drive onto the, yeah, like that. So it'll lock with pistons back here and it'll let us drive onto the balance without, um, and balance it down so we can drive on it. And I think that's all for mechanical. So Greg, when you're looking at uh, having this team do their uh, own custom uh, gearbox area, uh, what comes to mind when we saw some of the images on screen for that? Uh, I mean, so first of all, I, I applaud your resilience. Um, this year was not an easy year for supply chain for, for anything. And so, you know, I apologize. You know, I'm not here on behalf of Rev, but I apologize for that. But I, I do think there's a huge kudos for you, you know, saying, hey, look, we're not going to be, you know, hung up by not being able to get a product that we want and just designing and building it. And I think that that's pretty awesome. Um, and uh, I mean, the, the whole thing looks pretty cool. I, I am curious about uh, how you uh, decrease backlash with epoxy. Uh, I think that that's an interesting little trick. And I always love hearing about those specific tricks. If you want to share anything there. Uh, I think what happened was that the Loctite wouldn't set properly. So instead of Loctite, they used epoxy. Um, and that seems to have set up pretty well. So now there's very little backlash between the thunder hex shaft and the gear in the arm. Uh, okay, yeah. So so you used, you basically filled the entire space between the shaft and the gear that was on it. So now there's no backlash at all. It's just basically one, one unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very clever. 
Was there anything else uh, on your team from mechanical side before we go to programming that like uh, new challenges in the last three weeks that your team has occurred or any uh, things that your team has learned for advice for other teams uh, here in the uh, charge up game? Um, well, on the climb, we do have a new tensioning system. So, and we've also um, moved the bolts holes for this carbon fiber tube back because we didn't want to drill holes into this carbon fiber tube. And so because we think that it'll um, decrease our uh, the strength of the tubes, and we've also put wooden dowels on the insides of each tube, which um, we think will help increase the strength by quite a bit and um, stop it from just crushing when because they're um, bolts weakening it from the sides. From on your climber wise, from a mechanical standpoint, I know we'll be getting the programming in a second. Um, where are you at in regards to getting that on your robot and starting to test it on your robot? Uh, right now, the climber is pretty much assembled. All we have to do is rig it onto the robot. Um, we haven't done that yet because we want to get the robot um, tested. And so the arm and the intakes and the claws were um, a higher priority. Is that the full climber like in front of you right now? Can we see like more of what that looks like? Uh, sure. Um, so this is the climber with the tubes. And so it has a middle stage here. So this is what the climber will look like when it's climbed with this bottom part being parallel with the ground and this top part being parallel with the robot, which is like slanted up. Love it. I can't wait to see that uh, on your bot as well, too, uh, and seeing some yeah. more testing. I think the whole the whole first community wants to see uh, how that's going to work uh, for that. So it's very exciting. Let's let's head over to the programming, talk about uh, some of your updates uh, going on from there and uh, some of the challenges that you've been facing and what's been working out well for you. Yeah, sure. So I think to start out with, we, we just wanted to discuss our programming architecture for this year and like a couple of notes. Uh, uh, we're using Python. We're glad that it's officially supported now. So we've been using the RobotPy library and we're trying to go for a command-based framework similar to last year. Um, one sort of plug is that we have a toolkit that we've been working on for a while now called RobotPy Toolkit 7407, which contains a lot of useful stuff that we plan to use in future years. And also you can see our GitHub repository at the link in the slide. Uh, yeah, so uh, to start out with, uh, for uh, Autonomous, we're going to be using um, combined pathing and odometry together to have sort of dynamic paths. And this includes our uh, integration with Photon Vision. Uh, so unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to test Photon Vision in our Autonomous yet, but we hope to do it soon with, our, uh, with the two new cameras that we just got mounted onto the robot. Um, uh, and then uh, we'll discuss more on or Sebastian will talk about sort of how our, we're going to go about picking up stuff and transferring stuff with our arm and uh, elevator mechanisms. So, uh, yeah. Great. So uh, to start out with odometry updates, uh, we've successfully managed to get uh, odometry pretty, or actually very accurate uh, without photon vision. And... Um, we also uh, have done some testing with Photon Vision with another camera. Initially, we did have some issues with sort of um, uh, sort of camera distortion near the edges, but we added in our own sort of thresholds, like if the uh, April tag is too near the end of the camera, or if the camera angle to the April tag is like too extreme, then we just don't use that April tag. And that sort of alleviated a lot of the error. So, uh, you know, you can, or so our odometry can sort of like shift to using photon visions uh estimated robot pose when we think that the april tag is good enough to use um we also did some experimentation with a uh, wpi libs built-in vision estimator and we decided that it, it's pretty good especially with the new thresholds that we added in so like a sort of like a precursor for your team when you, you're talking about uh, with odometry and photon vision are, are you using the photon vision in conjunction in order to like correct drift on your odometry or is there actually like other uh basis for using that photon vision as well since you said that you could do most of it with odometry yeah so actually our odometry seems like uh we haven't done like too significant testing yet but it seems like it's been working very well with like within a couple of centimeters photon vision is more for if we get pushed around with another robot or there ends up being some eventual drift it can help us sort of correct ourselves so and, and I guess, you know, given that this is the first year for April tags, um, how do you feel so far about, like, you think their impact, like, 
compare and contrast how you like the April tags versus the retro reflective of years past, or like, where do you think that that's going? Is it, is it open the door for anything new or are you kind of just adapting as you go? You know, I think that April tags are like actually have the potential for like creating really interesting sort of opportunities in future games. I mean, they seem like they've been really accurate so far from the data that we've been collecting. So I think that opens up room for more complicated things than scoring that could be done with just retro reflective tape. So, for example, I think like it's really helped with like things related to like sort of auto pathing and stuff like that. Like if I or if another robot sort of rams into us and shifts us off by a meter or something, our scoring might be messed up if we want, like, especially for this game with like sort of like the three or the like the wide variety of different scoring sections that you can go to. If we want to like sort of be able to auto route to a specific location, if we're like shifted off by a large amount, that could mess it up. And retroreflective tape might not help us fix that. And April tags seem to be doing a good job of that, though. So, yeah, speaking especially maybe when uh, you have to cross the cable protector or something in Auton, if you end up on that side of the for autonomous. Yeah, it, it's honestly just like, uh, sorry, what do you say? So I was saying like, like, well, you would use it like to like correct your pathing in Auton. Like if you ended up taking the side of the Auton where you cross the cable protector mm -hmm. and it like you know, wheel slips or something like that. That's where you're really going to see the value. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just like the, there's just so much more data that we're getting from April tags. And it's just like that much more helpful than retro reflective tape. Let's keep moving on talking about a couple other aspects of your programming. I know we want to go into your, your arm and other mechanisms as well too. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 actually, uh, we also had a couple of updates on the autonomous. So uh, we've been, uh, we've noticed that our uh, autonomous is, working really great at sort of moderate velocities, but a couple of challenges that we're having are when we like sort of speed it up or like increase the acceleration, there seems to be a bit of drift uh, with the robot by like maybe like about like a few centimeters or so, uh, which in the, like as we, uh, as our autonomous gets more and more complicated, it's creating some issues. Uh, but I think our next steps are sort of accounting for that with photon vision and integrating that. Yeah, so we can move on to the. Oh, uh, next slide, please. The next slide, again. <laughs> oh, you, you, you didn't make it. You didn't make it. Okay, sweet. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm I'm the I'm the guy who's working on all this stuff right here, um, and it's been going along pretty well. Um, there are a couple of issues that we had to face in terms of, um, like working along with, uh, you know, uh, 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 ca uh not a cascading, uh. What is it called? Uh, is it cascading? Okay, it is cascading. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Cascading elevator um, on a on a rotator on a rotating object with like a wrist, um, and it's been pretty fun to program actually. Um, and I want to thank our plug ThriftyBot. We love you guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, we like basically took the uh, cascading elevator from Thrifty, and uh, it's really 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 good. Um, but in any in any case. Um, uh, we had a little bit of issues in terms of like when we rotate and we extend all the way up. So like, um, uh, it's it's actually really nice that we're able to, um, you know, rotate while like we're extending at the same time. But one of the main issues is that we're having a buildup of like inertia when we switch directions a lot. So uh, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to install some sort of profiled PID or maybe use um, the Neo's Smart Motion um, feature to reduce our acceleration uh, at different lengths. Um, so we can make sure that we're not building up an inertia and we're going to tip the robot over. Um, and another good thing about like this arm that I, uh, I mean, we didn't ne necessarily recently realize, but like we could believe to be a strategy is using like the arm to shift our weight around. Uh, so like with CG. So if I, oh, if I pull this, if I pull this elevator all the way up, I'm able to, uh, move our CG around by a bit because um, the elevator is pretty heavy, which allows us uh, to potentially balance um, on the charge station, not necessarily being in our like, you know, not, not, having to, not having to just balance with our, you know, swerve pods, but also with the arm. And that also helps us when we're driving around because we can forcefully um, move our arm in the opposite direction that we're driving in and making ourselves, you know, less viable to tipping. Um, so all these things are very interesting and fun and 
weird to program and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, but more into like the integration of actually like, oh, we're going to pick up a claw or a, not a claw, a cone, a cone or a cube, right? Um, so as you can see, we kind of have two intakes. We have the, you know, normal ground intake and we have like a claw. Um, and the main, if you probably heard this from our last OA post, but like the main way we're going to, the main way we're going to really um, intake uh, cubes, at least from like our first standpoint, is by dropping this elevator and intaking up through here through the claw. Um, and that's going to be a lot of serious, you know, integration, including like with odometry, um, because we're trying to incorporate a lot of, um, we're trying to incorporate a lot of our odometry into the entire system. Um, so for instance, like each, um, each movement of the arm is going to be sort of no, like a known pose on the, uh, like relative to an April tag, for instance, like if we want to like go and pick up a cone from the double loading station that can be referenced from the odometry of the robot and sent to straight to the claw or, and the arm to, you know, do its thing. Um, I also want to highlight one more thing. Uh, we have these distance sensors right here at the top and the bottom. Um, and that's going to allow us to uh, accurately sense when we need to actually like, you know, stop and close our uh, pneumatics on the claw. Um, because we realized at the beginning that we're probably not gonna be able to see from that far away, especially from the double loading station. Um, like, where we're going to like position or if we need to close the claw because we might like close the claw run all the way back and we don't actually have like our game piece so what we decide to do is we're just going to get some ir sensors and automatically close that um which you know will help with everything um yeah everything has overrides by the way too but yeah so i, I don't mean to cut, cut you guys off because this is awesome stuff i do want to make sure we give ann enough time if she has anything to jump in as well too before we let your team go uh so before we wrap up with your robot anything else you'd like to dive into and tell us a little bit more about um, so one thing we're doing this year is using um, a numpad for for the operator. Um, so uh, we had a slide, but I can show this right here. Um, so what we're doing is we are using this numpad to decide where we're going to score. Um, so uh, these three top buttons, um, hopefully you can kind of see this but um these three top buttons are deciding which grid we're going to score in and then um the numbers is where in the grid that we're going to score um so we're going to use this so that the operator can decide where we're going to score um and then we're also going to use this controller as overrides just in case uh, mechanisms start um going haywire we want to be able to override um so that's what we're using the controller for but mostly the operator is going to be using the numpad that's really cool to, to see the uh, numpad come into play uh, on there. As, you know, old schoolers uh, like myself on there, uh, it, it just kind of it just kind of feels so retro to have. So that's really cool uh, in regards to implementation. I, and I hope your operator appreciates it. Well, unless you are the operator, then I'm sure you would appreciate it. Have you guys oh, determined? We haven't. Uh, that hasn't been determined yet. No. Okay, fair enough. So there. Well, uh, Wired Boards, we really do appreciate. Like I said, unfortunately, running a little bit short on time, but thank you so much for telling us about uh, your progress and what you've been going through. Uh, Wired Boards, once again, make sure you are following them on the OA blog uh, as well as on the OA Discord, and we can't wait to see that robot come together uh, and some really cool stuff coming from you all. So thank you so much and good luck uh, until your first event. We really appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you go to the 3D Experience student community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first and click on go to student community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.